are here, ladies and gentlemen. Tell them what we're here for. Welcome to the Peach Crisp Show. Today, me and Colton, with beautiful audio, are going to be reviewing Boots and Boots, The, the Last Wish. Wish. Y'all know the criteria. Let's just get into it. Plot 25. Go. Starting Out off of strong 25. with the plot. <laughs> Solid plot. Loved, loved all the characters that drove the plot to the final point. I mean, I don't think we're gonna. Me and Caleb have many negative things to say about Boots and Boots. The yeah, last wish. We're not gonna. We're gonna spoiler free. Try to keep that completely. You know. Let y'all be I completely want more aware of that. To see this movie. Yeah, the more people that see this movie, the more greatness. We it is criminal that like Avatar is making billions and Puss in Boots is not. Movie is not. It's not. But overall, the Puss in Boots plot is fantastic. Oh, I'll, I won't go ahead and give it. It's a twenty-one out of twenty-five. All right. See, I agree with you mostly. But there's not a single thing wrong with the plot in my mind. Like all the characters have good motivation. Even like the the super corny villain that's just evil for evil's sake. He, you need an evil villain. Like I enjoy Jack. a good evil villain that doesn't have reason sometimes to be you evil gotta, other than just being evil. Sometimes you gotta be born and you just gotta choose violence. Violence, yeah. He just chose violence. Like all the characters had good reason for being there. The movie, like, it tackles, like, death and anxiety, which you don't really get in children's movies very often. There was nothing wrong with the plot in my eyes. A movie about Puss in Boots, this was the best plot we could have gotten, I think. No, easily. Easily the best plot we could have gotten. So, I gave it a 25. Absolutely. Also, I want to mention, my expectations for this movie going into it were, like, I thought it was just going to be a good movie. I thought it was going to be a 7. I thought, okay, Solid when I first saw it, and it started off with Boots and Boots, hey, Boots and Boots, and it's like, uh, this movie seems like it's going to stretch. It's going to be a good movie, but it's not going to be anything, you know, mind-boggling. And then he starts singing Fearless Hero. Ooh, Fearless Hero. Who is your fan? Anyways, on to character, which is out of 15 points. When I think of the characters, I liked all of them. I've said multiple times on the Peach Crip Show, um, Cough Cough Bullet Train episode, there are some villains that I just hate hating. They ruin the fun of the movie, they take out of it, and this movie doesn't have that problem at all. One of the main villains is Jack Horner, and he's so funny. Jack Horner, he, bro. Like, I honestly forgot about Jack Horner. Like just I the did, whole the, no, it's the lullaby. The lullaby is like, so forgettable. He's so comedically evil, and for no reason either. I don't want to spoil. Like he has like a sad backstory, but he makes a joke about how he was like, I was just a boy with loving parents and a pie business and like and a filthy and a rich parents with a successful with a pie, money. and he was like. <laughs> But I just wanted to be magic or something like that. I don't know. I just wanted it was magic so for my own fairy tale. The only character that I didn't like was the dog, which he's like the goofy sidekick character that like every kids movie has. That ties in all the all the serious parts to make it goofy. Yeah, but by the end of the movie, I ended up really liking him. He has like a sad backstory and good character moments and he like actually ties the characters together. Oh. The only character I didn't like, I ended up liking by the end of the movie. And when I saw it again in theaters, I liked him the whole time because I knew that he was going to get better by the end. So I gave characters a 14 out of 15. And Just I can't really... The first few minutes. Okay. Yeah. A second viewing definitely would have helped some of my scores. I'm pretty sure I improved because, you know, my scores for this movie are already, you know, above average for most movies. But I would say the characters for me, I guess for only a first time showing, Jack Horner, he, it was a very fun villain to watch and hate. Like he's a fun one to hate, but like, I don't know, some of his, some of his time on screen was just kind of annoying. Like it was really annoying sometimes just how self-centered he was wasn't a shred of mercy in his he was which is comically evil character I've i know i've never seen like, no, it's he like, doesn't care he, he does not care he 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 has a whole crew with him and he is willing just to throw them off cliffs just to just to get across 
<laughs> and he <laughs> won't save them just because it, it it would make him like sweat. Dude, Any sweat off so his brow, he, he tries to take it's off. So funny. One of the better characters that's really slept on is Jiminy Cricket. You're so funny, dude. There are so many memes on TikTok. Why? With, why? Why, yeah, Jack? Why would you? Why would you throw your men off the cliff, Jack? <laughs> Jack, I think we're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, "Yeah, duh. You haven't figured that out." Boom. <laughs> Jack Corner wasn't my favorite. The dog. He. There was at times where his sadness was a little too just in your face, like how, like I got to see everything through a positive light because that's just my character. Sometimes it's like. He he was he didn't even get real. Sometimes. It was really dumb sometimes. It, it was just like, oh, my family. We played hide and seek, and they never found me, and I just lived like that. Like, dude, at least like act sad. Yeah, that like that was the only that was why I didn't like him at first was because he was like so like oblivious to his horrible. Honestly, it's it, but but Kitty and uh, Puss like bouncing off of him. It, it worked well. For it worked him, well, man. but. A similar score to Caleb's. I, I put a 13 instead of a 14. Solid, so, solid. solid. Very solid. Moving on to our next category, originality. I gave it a 5. So, it's a very... I mean, I wouldn't say the plot is very original. It's a, a MacGuffin really chase. Really They're really all really going good. after this one treasure, The Last Wish. And it's all a big it's chase the name of the movie. to The Last Wish. And they're all pushing each other. I mean, there are scenes where they're all together and they're all fighting each other. In itself isn't original, but the way they all come together and the way that how the movie splits off each team, awesome. Like, you'll watch the, I mean, I'm sure you've already seen the trailers. We got Jack Corner, who's the villain, who's going after it. Puss in Boots, who's going after it. And we also got the Goldilocks family. Mm -hmm. And the Goldilocks family, I mean, we didn't mention in characters, but are I don't want to really with them, wonderful group of characters. They got some tearjerker scenes. They do. I about, I about cried both times I saw it. I knew. It I, I, I wasn't about to cry, but you know, it was it was I'm real. A sad it was a real sappy, sappy scene. It's not. It doesn't take much to make me cry. Is what I mean by that. <laughs> that is true. So you gave it a five. I did give it a five. Um, I like almost fully agree with you, but like because the movie was just a MacGuffin chase. Like, I've seen plenty of movies like that, but this does so much, as you said, in, like, completely original ways. But since it, the whole movie was a MacGuffin chase, I had to dock one point. So I gave originality a four. Which is a fair point. argument. I was I was bouncing back and forth between a four and five just because the whole, you know, plot of the movie was a MacGuffin chase. I it's feel like hard that's to come up with an original plot these days. So when a movie does something, like, as original as this movie does, I, I can't blame somebody for giving it a five. I'm not. Like, it... But I had to dock some points somewhere else. This would get a 100. <laughs> Speaking of perfect scores, um, enjoyment. Ooh, um, good segue, good segue. There wasn't a single second of this movie that I wasn't happy. Like, from the beginning, like, I love Puss in Boots' voice. Oh, man. It's, it's... I, I would want Puss in Boots to read an audiobook too. Yeah, no. And, like, in this enjoyment, it gets into, for me, like... The voice actors did such a good job. It's so beautifully animated, but we have two categories. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get to, to that, that stuff. So. But like the it it's it's fast paced. Like the first scene of the movie is him singing the Fearless Hero song, and it's incredible. Well, he sings the Fearless Hero song, and then at the end of the of like the five minute scene, he dies. Not a spoiler because it happens in the trailer. And then that's when he goes to the the doctor, who's also like the dentist and all that. That was a funny scene. And then finally, I'm your doctor, one, vet, and dentist. <laughs> finds out he has like one life left, and then like the movie goes straight into it from there, which oh, like yeah. sometimes is jarring when it picks the plot up too fast. But this movie didn't really need like 20 they minutes, pick the plot so. up in a good way by introducing the best character of all of them, Death. Dude, when Death shows up, Whew. that is a small there spoiler. Is... The wolf is Death. Oh, there's not. But like one thing I moment. love about this movie, I pointed this out to Daniel before he went to see it. Um, we were gonna do a three-person Peach Chris, but we needed to film this and get it out, and we don't know where Chris is. Chris so is MIA. At the he's moment. MIA right now. We'll find him. We'll find him. <laughs> but 
I told him this, um, but one thing I love about the movie is at the beginning, this is a light spoiler, so skip ahead like a minute if you don't want anything to yep. Um In the Fearless Hero song, he says, who's never been touched by a blade, Puss in Boots is never afraid. And then he's not afraid until death cuts his forehead and he like feels the blood. Like he's not afraid until he gets cut by a blade. And like, I don't know why, but that's so cool to me. The, yeah. the second one thing changes in his song, he The second anything he changes. Afraid. He's so used to things going his way. Like the way he, he moves throughout at the beginning of the movie is so nonchalantly. And it's like, oh yeah, I can do this. I am Puss in Boots. And then he just, just takes down all these villains, all these organizations, all these big monsters, and he's just so effortlessly. And then he just goes back to entertaining the crowd because he's not he's not defeating the monster because he has to. He's doing it to entertain his Yeah, because fans, a lot of this movie his, to to make the legends more A lot of the movie profound. is like Push realizing that there's more to life than just being a legend. Being a legend, especially because he's a legend that he doesn't have anybody because he's so prideful of himself. So like the fact that at the beginning of the movie he changes because one thing changes in his his song that he made for himself. Like I, it, it might not be as cool to anybody else, but like he's so arrogant about himself that it wasn't until something that he says about himself changes that he was like, oh crap. So there's so much like small stuff like that. There's a lot of symbolism in the movie. Like I'm sure if you watch incredible. it twice like Caleb does, he you catch it and it yeah. it's all the better. It it is oh my goodness. Like there wasn't a boring scene in this movie. And if there was, I probably still would have given it a twenty five just because of how fun this movie was to look at. Yeah. But I gave it a twenty five. I mean it's hard to really, you know, Take capitalize or go off of it. There were some scenes for me that were kind of slow, including the dog. Like, that included the dog. They were just like, uh, I could go without this. Or, gosh, get a, you know, get a grip. But yeah. there are some scenes that were just a little slow, so it bumped down the enjoyment a little bit. And then there are some characters that brought the enjoyment down just one point. I mean, my score is a 23. It's still very high on a at 23 out of the 25. So let's go ahead and go to the next category, animation. These next two are easy. Yeah, should we just go ahead and just we say... We can bump them both out at the same time. Like, yeah, knock them out at the same time. Say what you gotta say. Animation and voice acting, both hand in hand, were beautiful. All these voices fit each character so well. Puss in Boots, just in general, so iconic. And then just hearing his voice, more than just a few just cutaway gags and yeah. Shrek. Oh man, so good. On top of animation, who crisp? And I'm not, and he's not even here. So <laughs> it was, it was so good. Just seeing some of the scenes shift to different animation styles, like during action scenes, it gets a little yeah, choppy. Some of the action scenes, it gets like a little choppy. Which like kind of like a lower frame rate, like in like um, in a Spider Man. In the Spider Verse, it gets lower frame rate. It's so cool to look at. Yes, and it just but it was so vibrant and colorful. Like even in moments where it was supposed to be dark and shadowy, you could just you could it's just find a something burst to look at. of color. You so want to go ahead and pass on what? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't I don't want to toot it's horn anymore, but I definitely gave voice acting and animation a five out of five. Big duck. Can you can you agree? So, I have some pretty divisive thoughts on the animation of this movie. So, besides the Demon Slayer movie, which is my favorite movie to look at because I love the Demon Slayer animation so much, this is the best animated movie I've seen in terms of animation. It's definitely a top four animated movie for me, but it might be top three, honestly, I don't know. It's pretty close to Spider Verse, but um, that's true. It, like, there's so many things that reminded me of Spider Verse. Yeah, no, the just, choppy animation. All the choppy animation. Yeah, it's got some right. comic booky stuff. It never looks like Spider Verse, but like, it's very you similar. Can, you can feel it, but it is more visually pleasing to me than Spider Verse because it's like more detailed, and that's not a knock on Spider Verse's graphics. I think like, the I, love I think the animation. I, I watched the video at one time. It. 
it made it feel cartoony. I feel like more cartoons nowadays are kind of shifting toward the more realistic look. There's not so many sh just huge bursts of colors and just wacky things happening like Puss in Boots riding rockets Dude, the, during a fight. That scene or, of him riding the rockets was just such a pretty shot. Which is shown in the trailer, so. It's in, it's okay. It's at the beginning, like first two minutes. Of the yeah. Movie, first, just him, him riding rockets, the explosions, just huge hands just swinging at him and then just seeing like huge jack corner it oh uh, he, he's just so goofy looking he's a goofy looking dude goofy looking dude goofy and... looking goober yeah no it's already divisive enough that i think that this movie is better animated than spider-verse but then which I is was, a big take that's a big take i was thinking about it there was another movie that came out this year that was kind of it was big for having really good effects and it's called Avatar The Way of Water. I've, I've heard of that somewhere. And any day of the week, I would rather look at this movie than Avatar. And that's not a knock on both, Avatar, both too, because that's have what that's live Amazing graphics-wise. Graphics -wise. But Puss and Boots captures your attention way There's better. so much more stuff, like lively stuff happening. And Avatar was just... Because what's the point in having really all these wonderful movie. graphics if it's not capturing your attention? Yeah. That, that's... It's kind of like going into a museum, like, oh man, such beautiful art, but it's not Boy. really capturing my attention. I can't sit in the museum, me personally. I can't, I can appreciate good art, but I can't sit there for hours on hours, just like, hmm, oh wow, this <laughs> color and this color contrast so beautifully. Oh, also, um, uh, I didn't talk about voice acting at all. Every, every, every single person in this movie does a flawless job. Like, oh yeah. Standouts are especially, I probably should have looked up actors, but um, Puss in Boots, Kitty and Death. Like, who Death. Just hearing him talk, man. Boy. It's like all, it's low, it's not. It's not part of his, you know, voice acting, but the whistle. Dude, the whistle. That's another thing I like. The whistle, when you first hear it, like that, it's like, <laughs> you don't know what it is. So it's unsettling. It's very eerie. And then after you hear it, when you hear it the second time, it's just scary because you know what it is. And then you hear it a couple more times in the movie and by the end of it, as like Puss in Boots is getting less afraid of it, quote unquote, like obviously he's so scared of it because it's death. Like you, the audience, the, the viewer, it's not as scary anymore. And I thought that was pretty symbolic and good. <laughs> so I gave them both a five. Attachment, which is out of 10. I had to think about this one for a while because I was looking at it and I was like, I'm about to give this movie a nearly perfect score. I couldn't, I couldn't lie on attachment and like bump it down a few points just to not sound Please. like I'm way too into this movie because I am way too into this, mo into this movie. I wasn't fully attached to everybody, so I also couldn't give it like a nine or a ten. As I said at the like towards the beginning of the movie, I didn't really care about the dog, but by the end. I was close to tears with him. I was I cared about the Goldilocks family the whole time. They also brought me close to tears. And I didn't care about Jack Horn. But like, you're not really supposed to. So I I don't He's a hit or miss character. I don't fault sure. the movie about like I I loved watching him. He's so he's such a goofy villain. I didn't really care if he lived or died or you know disappeared or That's blah funny. blah blah. Got a fairy tale death or whatever by the end of the movie. So like that's the only reason that this doesn't have a 9 or a 10, so I gave it an 8. Not to be, sound like a broken record, but I agree with Caleb. There's a lot of things that we agree on, because this movie was so good, and we have just both enjoyed it very well. I'm going to go ahead and skip to it and say I gave it an 8, but all for the same reasons. I I really didn't feel just, just so strongly attached to everyone. I would say the top three I felt like were Hoots and Boots, Death, and possibly like the Goldilocks, but like the family as a whole. Just seeing them all kind of work together. I would definitely say my least favorite was um probably Brother Bear. I like Baby. Baby Bear was good. He was good, but he wasn't all that. The Mama Bear had the best emotional moment. Yes, Mama Bear. Mama Bear is like a true a, mama. She was such a mom. She was such a mom. It was devastating. In but, some parts. No spoilers. No spoilers, but she was such a mom. Anyways, I gave Attachment an 8 as well. The last one. Mm, the last wish. The last wish. 
Too bad this. So last... That's not my wishes for this to end. Because I would love to keep talking about this maybe, but all things come to an end. So that's why we're Speaking on the finale. Way. That was oh! good. So what did you give the finale? Ending was great. Puss in Boots comes comes together with um what's no spoilers. Name? Kitten. Kitty. Kitty. Kitty softball. And the dog. Dog's name is in Spanish. Can't remember its name. But they call them a couple names in the movie and they don't say They all come together stuff. in a very big happy moment. The Goldilocks family come together in a big happy moment. Jack Horner, he's the blah 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 blah. He's blah blahed off into existence and death is just there. He walks off. He walks he off. Did his, he tried to do his job. He tried. He tried. He couldn't do it. But the ending was really good. It was very beautiful. It was a it was a real emotional like there are times where I could have cried. <laughs> I, just, I am emotionally dead. I don't cry. <laughs> I do not cry. It was good. It was a good ending. I didn't give it a perfect score. I gave it an eight because I've definitely seen better movie endings. I didn't expect it to end the way it ended though. So that was a very big plus for me. I expected it to end kind of like how all, you know, DreamWorks movies end, but it did pretty good. I gave it an eight. That's fair. I am gonna have to di disagree just a little bit. Go ahead. Um, all ears. We were we were we were going over some of our like our thoughts before it, so we can get some stuff to say. There wasn't a better way for this movie to end. Every character is like cliche as it is. They get their wish, but there's only one wish. So how do they all get their wish? Watch the movie to find out. Yeah. Um, except for Jack Horner, but like. I don't know. Maybe maybe he did get his wish. Yes. But um. Dying. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, no. So light spoilers there. We are talking about the finale, but like we have a good wrap up scene, good emotional beats between all the characters that we've grown to love, and then the movie ends on like a Shrek reference because Shrek Five Shrek confirmed. Shrek Five confirmed. Dude, I've been saying that ever since I left the movie theater. Shrek Five confirmed. I can't think of a better way they could have ended this movie. Like, it is not the best finale I've ever seen, but I've seen a lot of movies that I could give 10 out of 10 finales to. Well, you know what, very off topic, off of topic finales. Boots and Boots for a very great standalone movie did have some great callbacks to Shrek. It did. There was a couple. There, a couple characters. There's three that I caught, there's maybe more. Caleb only caught two at the time. But yeah. I definitely caught three, and spoil it was are. I wasn't I wasn't. But it's it's very nice to see these characters return just for cameos. There was a lot of there's a lot of like detail and stuff like that. It was it was good. There's also a lot of stuff leading up to the finale that I don't want to talk about because there's so many beautiful scenes towards the end of the movie. I've made this as spoiler free as I could. Um, it, I'm making without myself... jumping out of my seat yelling. It was so good because of <laughs> what. Yeah, no, I really want to go watch this movie again. Honestly, in like three to four years, some sometime way down the line, I might make just like a hour and a half long retrospective about how much I love this movie because there's so we much should come stuff back. to we'll definitely come back. It. So in a couple years, just come back to the channel, see if it's up. Check back you know, in a couple while years. You're, while you're at it, you <laughs> might as well subscribe so you can get that video notification. <laughs> but yeah, so I gave um, Finale a 10. Which a brings beautiful ending. My total to a ninety-six <laughs> out of hundred. And yours? An eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. And there it is. Puss and That's Boots. Puss and Boots. The last, last wish. wish. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Go check out the other videos. Comment down below what movies we should review. <laughs> Comment below what movies we should review next time. And we might just do it. We might do it. I'm known to listen to the fans. Me too. We actually did a totally serious conversation based off somebody's comment. You should go but you should video. figure out what that was. You'll have to go watch all of them to figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's it. Thank you for watching. I've been Peach. And I've been Seaman66. And, and we're Peach Seaman66.